Hello, I'm Juan Davies, Chief Creative Officer at KCT and PBS SoCal, and I'm joined by the newsroom of KPCC and LAS on a daily reporter roundup. Fighting fires is a very tough job, obviously, but this heat wave is adding a lot of risk. Jacob, you have more details on how stressed the state's firefighting resources are. Yeah, they're just about maxed out. That's because we have 23 major fires burning across the state right now. There are hundreds of smaller ones popping up because of lightning and then extreme heat and long-term deployments for these firefighters. It's burning people out. All of that means that the 6,900 firefighters that CAL FIRE has deployed and the fact they've booked every firefighting aircraft in the Western US, none of that is enough to keep up with what's going on. And sadly, there is no end to the bad weather in sight. We should all remember this moment because extreme heat, unrelenting fires, blankets of smoke covering the state, this is happening more and more often. This is climate change. We've got to decide if this is what we want to accept as our climate future. You know, many, many people are struggling or unable to make ends meet. Aaron has an update on efforts by state lawmakers to keep people in their homes. Yeah, the state Senate is looking at a bill that would keep tenants in their homes. The clock is currently ticking with evictions set to resume in courts in September, September 1st. This proposed solution known as AB 1436 would stop evictions of tenants who fell behind on their rent due to COVID-19. They would have to pay that rent back eventually. The bill would also let some homeowners delay their mortgage payments. Uh, and there is this sense of urgency as the legislature hopes to avert a, a feared wave of foreclosures and evictions. This bill could still be combined with another proposal winding its way through the state house. So as the clock ticks down, things are still really up in the air. Jose brings us up to date on what resources are available for immigrants who do not qualify for federal aid because they're not in the country legally. Right, there's a lot of demand for pandemic relief among these immigrants because they haven't been able to qualify for stimulus money or unemployment insurance because, as you mentioned, of their status. And there's only so many places to turn. The state did have a $75 million fund for immigrants, but that's been depleted. There's this other effort to get cash assistance to immigrants, and it's being run by this nonprofit called uh, Grant Makers Concerned with Immigrants and Refugees. The group's raised about $42 million from foundations, which is being parceled out to 61 different community groups across the state, which in turn is distributing the money to about 240,000 individuals. But, you know, when you have multiple estimates putting the number of undocumented Californians at more than 2 million, that help can only go so far. Last night, Californians cut back on their power use and the state's grid operator didn't have to put rolling blackouts into effect. Sharon has some tips on how to keep conserving power. Right, this shouldn't be new to anybody, but utilities want us to set our thermostats, our air conditioning at 78 degrees or higher. And if you can turn it off and use a fan instead, even better. You can unplug the energy vampires in your home. Those are the appliances that are sucking power from the grid even when they're not being used. Your microwave oven, your phone chargers, close the drapes and blinds that can keep your home cooler inside and wait until the early morning to run washing machine, dishwashers. It all helps to strain on the power grid. And of course, not all of us have pools or electric cars, but if you do, you can do your part by turning off your pool pump during these afternoon and evening hours and not charging your leaf for your Tesla in those early afternoon to evening hours. Thank you, Sharon. It is definitely very hot. And Jacob and I were talking about this before coming into the reporter roundup. What is the personal responsibility versus the state, the city, and the government responsibility to, to, to save energy? Well, they need everybody individually to save energy. But honestly, the really big savings come from companies like Tesla, which actually backed off its factory and put power into the grid from its power walls. And that's happening in a lot of places. Companies that have these demand response programs are lowering their use automatically so that there's more for everybody else to get us through these really stressful times. Well, thank you all at the KPCC NLA's newsroom and thank you for tuning in. Take care of your neighbor, your family, be healthy, and we will see you tomorrow. Oh. Thank you.